Yo yo, welcome to lesson 33. Today we're going to learn about buns. This video will be super short and to the point. So let's get started. So back in the Python lessons, I talked about buns and how they're hooked up to functions. So basically on a website, when a user clicks a bun, we want it to call a function. So that way it can perform some sort of action. This is super easy to do. Let me show you how. So let's go back to Replit and let's comment out this code and let's write a function that will get called when a button is clicked. So hit enter and let's create our function. So function and let's call it button click and let's open the parentheses and then open the squiggle brackets. And inside the function, let's just do console.log and let's print out clicked and end it with a semicolon. And now all we have to do is go to our index.html and in here, let's add a bun. So let's add it under the hello world. So hit enter and let's create a bun tag and then let's close it. And for the bun, let's call it bun. And inside the tag, let's add a property called on click. So do on click like this on click and then put equal and inside open the quotation marks. And now let's go back to script.js, copy the name of the function and now go back to index. And now inside the quotation marks, paste the name of the function and then open the parenthesis. And now let's click run. And now you should see a bun. So let's click it. And just like that, the button is hooked up to the function button click. Cool. So with buttons, we can also pass parameters. So let's go back to script.js and let's add a parameter to this function. So let's call it word. And when this function gets called, instead of doing console.log, let's use alert. So let's comment this out and let's put alert and open the parenthesis and put the parameter word inside there and end it with a semicolon. And I'll show you what alert does in a second. And let's go back to the index and on line 12 for the button, Inside the parenthesis, we can pass it the parameter. So in this case, let's pass the word bun. So we have to open the quotation marks and put bun and we close it with the quotation marks. And here you can see that this bun is a different color compared to the string on the left. So what happens is we have a quotation mark here and a quotation mark here. So now the HTML is confused and it doesn't know that this whole thing is our string. So what we can do is instead of using a double quotation mark, we can use a single quotation mark instead. So let's remove this quotation mark and put a single quotation mark and let's remove the closing quotation mark and put a single quotation mark as well. And now as you can see, it's all brown. So that means the editor understands that this is one string. So generally what I like to do is I use double quotation marks for strings. And if I need to use quotation marks within the string, I will just use single quotes. Cool. Now let's click run and now let's click the button and boom, an alert came out. So basically by using an alert, a prompt will display. And basically the text we have is bun and that basically showed up here. And now you can just click OK, which will just dismiss the prompt. Cool. Now let me show you how to create a bun with JavaScript code. So let's go back to script.js. Uh, let's scroll up and let's copy the code from line four to line eight. And this code was basically used for creating paragraphs. So let's paste the code and let's remove the comments and back tab once. And cool. Instead of P, let's put bun and let's put button two for the text. And let's keep these two lines because it's adding the text to the element and we're adding the element to the document. So now let's click run. And here, as you can see, we have two buttons. So let's click on button one. We got our prompt and now let's click on button two. And now nothing happens. The problem here is that we didn't hook the button to a function. We can do this very easily. So let's go to the next line and type element dot and type add event listener, open the parenthesis and in here, open the quotation marks and type click and add a comma. And now basically we have to give it a function to call. So let's give it button click and now let's click run. And basically what's happening is that when we click this button, it triggers an event called click. And because we added this event listener to the button, it triggers this click, which will call the function button click. And this click event also sends an event object over to the click button. And since our button takes one parameter word, this event object is passed over as a parameter for the word. And not to stray off topic, this event object is basically sent whenever an event is triggered on the DOM. So because of this, our prompt displays an object as opposed to a word. So we can work around this by creating a new function that doesn't take any parameters that simply prints out whatever we want. Unfortunately, Replit crashed on me and it won't load back up. So I'll finish the video off in Visual Studio Code. So instead, what we can do is we can create a new function that takes no parameters and it just sends an alert to show a word. So let's do function button click to open the parentheses and don't pass the parameter and open the squiggle brackets. And now we can just do alert and do button two and add a semicolon. And now let's copy this and paste it here on line 18. So this way it calls a function that does not take a parameter and it will show an alert that says button two. And now when we open this page, we can click button one, which will show button. So let's click okay. 
and now let's click button two. And here we see button two. And cool, just like that, we created a button with JavaScript code. So hopefully you learned something new. If you wanna learn more about event objects, feel free to read more about it on W3 Schools. For homework, create a page with five buttons, pick any five colors, and when you click on a button, change the background of the body to the color of the button. This is a simple and fun exercise, so that way you can practice using buttons. Anyways, thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next lesson.